Hello, my name is Kain Tson, and today we are going to start a course called Introduction to Hashing. It's actually part of a larger course called Advanced Data Structure and Algorithm. I'll try to make this course as simple as possible. I want to remind you to subscribe so if you've not done so. Subscribe so that when I make new lessons, you'll get notified. Uh, this is very good for students who study computer science or computer engineering or some informatics. All right, so this is subscribe. Look down below, you'll see subscribe button, then you can click on it. All right, so in this series, we are going to look at review of direct access table. In the language of Hashin, this is also, this is called direct access table or something you know as arrays. We also look at introduction to hash table, concept of collision, collision resolution by chaining, introduction to hash functions, universal hashing, open addressing, linear probing, quadratic probing, double hashing, perfect hashing. These are actually interesting topics and I'll try to make it as interesting as possible. All right, let's start with the first one, arrays. Uh, one thing about learning is, is, is that it's always good to start with something you already know. So let's look at what we know about arrays. We know that an array, array is collection, right, of elements that can be assessed using an index. So this is what we know about an array. But one thing I'd like to tell you is, in, this, in, the, in the language of hashing, now that we are discussing hashing, we're always going to use key, all right? So this index is also the same as key, it's also the same as subscript. But from now on, we'll more like, we'll more be using our key instead of index. So let's take a simple array. Let's take, for instance, this array. Let's say it contains a list of names, just random names. And let's see how we can assess this element in this array. The reason I'm trying to review this is you you actually need this for you to understand the concept of hashing. So let's say we have Ben, uh, Jackie, Connie, and we have, uh, okay, so we have Saf, and we have So, one thing you need to remember is the keys of an array always starts with uh, zero. So, if you have an array of size, an array of size, of size, uh, let's say, M, then the keys will be zero to what? To M minus one. The keys will be 0 to n minus 1. So here we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Let's say the name of this array is T. So if we say T with a key of 4, what will it give us? It will give us only that is the data stored in this array will be returned. So this is what we know about array. Let's now take it a little further. Let's now look at the futuristical uh, uh, notations about arrays. The first thing you need to know is in the language of hashing, array is also called direct address tables. So use of array is called direct addressing. Arrays can be used when the universe of keys is reasonably small. I will explain this a little uh, in, a, in a short time. If a dynamic set is needed such so that each element has a key drawn from a universe. And then when u is equal to 0, 1, 
up to m minus 1 and m is not too large so array works well when you have a few items if you have 1 to 10 then you can easily say uh, for instance you can easily say let's use the pen let's use the pen all right so you can easily say t 10 and you get whatever is there right but when when m is equal to a very large number then assessing the element of the arrays will be very difficult now position k points to an element in the set with a key k so we can also say position k it means the element in the set or in the array with index but this time we are saying with a key k if the set contains no element then tk is equal to nil so if there is no element in position k or with a key k then tk will be null. all right let's now see implementation of direct address table this is the same principle that is used in hashing that i'm going to illustrate now so let's say we have let's say we have an array or an a, a direct address table t that has 10 elements 0 1 2 3 uh, 4 5 6 7 8 9 i think i missed it up okay so let's assume we have something like this all right so assuming that t zero right does not contain anything so there is nothing here but t zero is available even though it doesn't contain anything is also available meaning that something can be stored in the nil then t2 let's say it contains some value let's say d then we have this is d okay then we have t3 contains a value let's say uh, d just for data okay let's say d1 d2 let's say d1 d2 and let's say uh, uh, t4 contains nothing t5 contains data t5 contains d3 t6 contains nothing t7 contains nothing and t9 contains nothing then T8 contains, let's say, D4, right? So you quickly notice that when data is stored here, you actually need two items. One, you need in uh, the key, and you, are, you also need the actual data. So what it means is that right inside each of these, we have two uh two items one is the value let's say for t2 we have two and here we have what d1 that is here we have so this is what we have here and the same thing goes with d2 we have two items as specified now take note that the concept of universe and the concept of t t represents the keys that contain actual value so let's say we have something like this okay so we have this is the universe everything that can be stored all the keys that can hold data and then the actual values may just be so in this case we have what we have 
our keys the actual keys is equal to two three five and both and eight so this two is this uh, three and then five and then eight so in this case we have one four right six seven nine and zero so so this is how to represent the universe or the universal uh, which is just called the universe in the language of Hashin, right all right so at least you have understood what how direct addressing works you address the particular element, uh, the particular key, and then get the value stored there. So how do we search, insert, and delete in a direct address table? That is also very important in study of data structure. So to search for an element in an array T, and we are searching for, uh, we are searching having a key. We simply return uh, T K. So we are searching the table T and we have the key K, the element to be T K. Now, if we want to insert, we want to insert into T, right? And we want to insert X. We also need to use the key. So we simply insert T, X, key is equal to X, right? So this is the two items representing each of the elements or each of the storage in the array. So to delete, you simply set, you want to delete uh, from T, You want to delete from T and you want to delete X. You simply set T, X and the key to what? You set it to nil. And that means you've deleted the item. All right, so this is where we'll stop for now. But take note that each operation takes Uh, time that is for each of the operation okay so this is how such uh, insert and delete works for direct address table which actually is the same thing as array so we've covered review of arrays and the next one we are going to discuss we now continue with hash tables I'd like to thank you for viewing remember to subscribe if you've not done so click on the subscribe button and feel free to leave me a note tell me to explain clearly or something you don't understand just let me know you can also like or hate this video if it's been informative for you or not or share with your friends and let's see in the next lesson